Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have an indefinite integral of 1 over tan t times the square root of 4 minus sine squared t dt. So if you want to try it on your own, go ahead, pause the video. You're going to need to, I'll give you a hint, do u sub and then another integration technique. Okay, so first things first, when I look at this integral, I go, hmm, tangent and sine aren't really related to each other in terms of derivatives if I'm trying to do a u sub or something. So let me rewrite tangent in terms of sines and cosines. So I know tangent t is sine t over cosine t, but since it's in the denominator, then that cosine t is going to get flipped up to the numerator. So I can rewrite this now as, I want a little more room, cosine t dt over sine t times the square root of 4 minus sine squared t. And then hopefully now you can kind of see ooh, what a good choice would be for you if we let u equal sine t, that's perfect because then du is cosine t dt, which I have right here. When you have one lonely little uh, factor of sine or cosine, that's what you want to get absorbed as du. So just think backwards, who should u be? So that du would be cosine t dt. And then that's great. This will be u, this will be u squared. So let's make our substitution. Now I just have du in the numerator over u times the square root of 4 minus u squared. And then from here you go, oh, the substitution fun has come to an end in terms of u sub, but now it's time for a trig sub. Exactly. So when we have the constant first minus the variable quantity squared, that's when we come in with good old sine theta substitution. So we're going to let u equal a is 2 because we have 4, right? So it's a squared minus u squared. So this is going to be 2 sine theta. And then du will be 2 cosine theta d theta. All right, very good. So then let's see what we've got going on now. In the numerator, instead of du, we have 2 cosine theta d theta. This u all by itself is 2 sine theta. And then we have square root 4 minus 2 sine theta squared. Beautiful. How are we doing? Okay, good. Now let's see what else. These twos cancel. That's good. Then we have integral cosine theta d theta over. This is sine theta times the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. And remember, the whole point of doing trig sub is so we can simplify these expressions with our Pythagorean identities. So if I factor out the 4, then I have 1 minus sine squared theta. So this is 4 cosine squared theta, which is sitting underneath this radical sign right here. So if we take the square root of 4 cosine squared theta, remember, that's absolute value, 2 cosine theta, but we always restrict the angle in trig sub, so we know that that's going to end up being a positive quantity. So if you want, in the next step, you can just write out, okay, this is going to be cosine theta d theta over sine theta. And then remember, we have the square root of all of that, so it's 2 cosine theta sitting in the denominator. How are we doing? Good, good, good. Okay, so this cosine theta cancels out with the cosine theta in the denominator. I still have this little 2 down here, so let's take it outside. Write that as a 1 half out front. And then you have integral 1 over sine theta, that's cosecant theta d theta. Good? Okay, antiderivative of cosecant theta, you should memorize. There's a couple different versions. So I'll write them out for you. <laughs> you have options. Don't we love it when we have options? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. In terms of food, I like it. I like a good buffet. So I'll write it in terms of x. So you have one option with negative natural log cosecant x plus cotangent x plus c. 
You also have another option with no minus sign and the minus signs in between. So then you have natural log cosecant x minus cotangent x plus c. It doesn't matter which one you learn, just learn one of them. Um, I mean, this one might be easier to learn because you don't have to remember which one's positive, which one's negative inside. You just put a negative outside. And usually it's easy to remember that cosecant x is antiderivative, has to do with cosecant cotangent because of secant, right? So if, you, if you'll recall, antiderivative of secant x is natural log absolute value secant x plus tan x plus c. So they're very similar, right? It's just the co-functions for cosecant. This, this one might be easier to remember and you just gotta add a negative. If you're gonna learn this one, which I, I like it because I don't like the negative out front in my final answer, it really just irks me then you just have to remember that cotangent is the one that has the minus sign. Um, the way I, I remember that is basically like, this is cosecant's antiderivative, so cosecant itself will stay positive, the other guy is gonna be negative. But whatever, it doesn't matter, honestly. Okay, so back to the problem, here we were, we have one half integral cosecant theta d theta. So I'm gonna go with the positive one. Let's, let's just be positive people. One half natural log absolute value cosecant theta minus cotangent theta plus C. And then remember, when we made our trig sub, we let, uh, it was U, yes, be two sine theta. So now we need to draw a triangle. Isolate the trig function. So U over two is sine theta. So here's my triangle for theta. Sine theta is the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse sides of the triangle. From the Pythagorean theorem, this missing side is rad 4 minus u squared, which you'll remember that was in our integral earlier. That's not a surprise. That's going to always happen. And then now let's come in and figure out cosecant theta and cotangent theta using the triangle. So we have one half natural log Cosecant theta is reciprocal of sine theta. So you could just take the reciprocal here or you could look at the triangle. It'll just be two over u minus cotangent theta is ratio of adjacent over the opposite side. So that would be rad four minus u squared over u plus c. And then before you get too excited, don't box it just yet. Remember u, was equal to sine t originally. So now we have to go back and rewrite everything in terms of t's. And then notice they have the same denominator. So I'm gonna put it all over u, which is sine t. And then this is two minus rad four minus sine squared t. Keep this going, plus c. And you, you do need the absolute value bars. Can't dump them this time. So that's the final answer. If you wanted to use the other formula for the antiderivative of cosecant, then your answer would only be a wee bit different. You'd have a negative one half natural log, and then underneath would be two plus, or inside, radical four minus sine squared t over sine t plus c. You know, I feel like I've seen one other version of the antiderivative of cosecant theta. I have to go double check my sources. I feel like there's one more out there, not used as often. I mean, just learn one and you're in business, okay? I don't, I don't see the point in learning so many. Okay, that concludes the integral of the day. How did you like it? I thought it was fun because we've got to practice U sub and trig sub. And we don't do antiderivative of cosecant theta so often, so I thought it would be a nice review. Some of my little angelic students that were in my pre-calc and calc one class are taking calc two this summer. So it's accelerated eight weeks, bless their hearts. And I hope they're watching these videos so that they can get good at integrating. I wish I could have taught them calc two, but I have to teach calc three this summer, so I can't do, I can't do everything all at once. <laughs> but anyways, I'm sure they're gonna do great. Um, and I hope it, this helps you out too, in case you're studying for Calc 2, or you just wanna brush up some of your skills before you do Calc 3, or if you're just watching for personal enrichment, which I think is the most beautiful thing of all. 
So thank you guys so much for your support. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Did you solve it differently? I'm curious. And stay tuned. I have a lot more new content coming your way. So don't forget to turn on your little notifications. That way you get alerted when I upload. And also please follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. I love you guys so much.